Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel Achievers Data Engineering. This is part 4 of Azure Data Factory tutorial series. In our previous video, we created our first Azure Data Factory. If you haven't watched that video, I would highly recommend to watch that before watching to this video. In this video, we are going to navigate to Azure Data Factory. We will see what are the options available in Azure Data Factory overview page. And we will also explore what is Azure Data Factory Studio. All right. So on this overview page of Azure Data Factory, we will be able to see most of the basic details which we provided while creating this Azure Data Factory. For example, its location, we can see its resource group and subscription and some other basic details. Now, uh, below that you will see we have an option to launch Azure Data Factory Studio that we will just talk about in a few minutes. Apart from that, we have got some hyperlinks through which we can either go on the quick starts, refer to some documentation and training modules. And in the bottom of the overview page, we have some quick monitoring uh, charts. So with help of these quick monitoring charts, we will be able to see what are the pipelines we have recently ran because we haven't ran or created anything, it's all blank. But once we will have multiple pipelines and they will be running, then we will be able to see quick details over here. For example, how many pipelines runs, how many activities runs, how many triggers got executed, what was the CPU utilization of integration runtime, and what was the runtime memory. So don't worry for these details as of now, I'm going to cover everything step by step. Uh, for now, it's just good to know where we can see things. Talking about activity logs, activity logs contain some operations that we might perform on this resource itself. When I'm saying this resource, I'm referring to Azure Data Factory Studio. For example, I just tried these kind of operations just to show you guys. So we can see I tried to create a delete log and then I created, I tried to create a log and then I deleted it. So these kind of operations will be visible here. Talking about access control, this is one of the important screen. Uh, from here, we will be able to grant access to someone else on this resource. So let's say I want to add, uh, I want to you know add a role assignment or I want to add as a co-administrator. So let's say I want to add a role, then I can simply you know click on that. It will navigate us to this screen. We can select any role. For example, if I want to select, uh, I want to grant someone monitoring reader access. I can select this one, click next. Then finally, I can select members. So here I can provide its email address and that will be added. So you can just click next and access will be given to that particular person. Tags, uh, tags are the same thing that we uh, we saw while creating this Azure Data Factory Studio. Uh, whatever, because while creating we left it blank, that's why it is blank. Anytime we can come here and add more tags or delete existing one. Talking about diagnose and solve problems. So uh, sometimes, you know, there might be some challenges or some technical issues on Azure Data Factory that might not be from our end, that might be from, uh, you know, Microsoft Azure's end or maybe some uh, uh, local issues or maybe there are some activities going on in the background of Azure Data Factory which is impacting the performance. So those kind of details will be available here and we will be able to monitor and troubleshoot them. Okay, talking about a couple of advanced option settings, I'll just uh, touch upon them. We'll talk about in details on these options in our upcoming videos. Uh, when it comes to network access, there are two options, public endpoint and private endpoint. For now, you can consider it like when, it, when this public endpoint is selected, then whatever communication. Uh, so what happens in the Azure Data Factory, all the communication or all the compute that we will be you know, using, that will be provided by self-hosted integration runtime. Consider it as a compute power or gateway that will be you know, providing all the compute power to perform activities, run pipelines in the Azure Data Factory. So when this public endpoint is selected, then all that communication, all that data movement is going to happen over public internet. However, when a private endpoint is selected, then all that communication and data movement will happen over a private endpoint. Private endpoint is nothing but providing or limiting an IP address within a VPN tunnel. So if we are opting this private endpoint, then all the communication and data movement is going to happen within a VPN tunnel over a secure network. 
talking about managed entities managed entities is again a way of securing data communication so let's say we want to give access to any other application to communicate with azure data factory then we can set up these things using managed entities we will again talk about this on these things in details in our upcoming videos talking about properties we have got some information regarding azure data factory here then logs uh, logs are nothing but uh, let's say we we don't want this Azure Data Factory resource that we have created deleted accidentally. So we can just set up some lock here. Um, we can set up two different type of locks uh, that can be read only or that can be deletion. So let's say uh, we can create a lock that someone will not be able to delete this Azure Data Factory resource or someone will not be able to modify any you know, details on this Azure Data Factory. We'll talk about these details in our upcoming videos. Then moving towards getting started, quick start. Ideally, I believe this option should be on the top, <laughs> but don't worry. So here we have got some quick links and document that we can go through to understand Azure Data Factory better. Talking about alerts, uh, it will have alerts. We can create our own alerts and rules. So based on activities that we will be performing on the Azure Data Factory, we will get some alerts or some, you know, it's all about monitoring and talking about metrics as i shown you on the overview page here we will be able to provide our own metrics that we want to you know see within azure data factory and we will be able to see these charts here we will uh, you know circle back to these matrix charts again once we will have a couple of pipelines set up and once we will have some data to be shown here so we will circle back on these charts again diagnostic setting again uh, we can you know uh, if we want to store the logs uh, and we want to send it to some other you know uh, portal where we want to investigate them further then we can come here and we can add those diagnostic settings so that whatever logs are being generated within azure data factory in the background those logs will be sent to a different resource and from here we can anytime enable the logs and uh, using this feature within azure data factory we can query uh, the logs uh, though over here we need kql uh, that is nothing but uh, custo query language and uh, using that kql we will be able to query the logs and see the details then talking about tasks i'll leave this for now because it's in the preview right now resource health is all about it will show what is the current health status of the resource whether is there any challenge going on or if there are any you know uh, issues then that will be highlighted here and last but not the least new support request so if you are facing any challenge on the azure data factory and we want support from microsoft then definitely we can come here and create a ticket whenever we are going to create a ticket first microsoft will you know suggest some auto solutions provided by whatever uh, you know whatever challenge that we are going to submit if you are not satisfied with that challenge then definitely we can go ahead and uh, you know submit a ticket all right i believe uh, that's all about the overview page or the first page of azure data factory now let's talk about azure data factory studio to go on the azure data factory studio i just click on this launch studio and wait for a couple of seconds while it is loading all right once you will click on launch azure data factory studio you will be landed on this particular page this is the home page of azure data factory studio uh, on this screen you will get some quick links uh, and it shows on a high level what all we can perform using azure data factory studio for example we can click on ingest and it will directly land us on a you know pre-configured wizard through which we can create some you know copy data activities for now i'll just cancel and we got some other quick links through which we can perform some quick activities along with that there are five different tabs available now throughout this tutorial we are going to highly use these three tabs which is author monitor and manage talking about author this is the page or this is the view where we are going to perform all the operations for example creating copy activity creating or creating our first pipeline creating data sets and all the second tab is all about monitoring so whatever pipelines we are going to create whatever triggers we are going to create and everything we will be able to monitor them at this page then talking about third page managing so whatever resource or whatever uh, you know items or artifacts that i'm talking about creating at the author page we will be able to manage them from here 
So at this point of time, if you are getting confused, what is integration runtime pipeline, then don't worry. As I mentioned, we are going to cover everything in details step by step. Now, the last step is all about a learning center. From here, you will get some quick links through which you can go on the tutorials, videos, and read the documentation provided by Microsoft Azure itself. All right, that's all for the part three of Azure Data Factory tutorial series. In our next video, we will understand key concept of Azure Data Factory Studio, and then we will follow along. I hope you like the content. If yes, go ahead and hit the like button and do subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date on any latest video that I upload. Thank you for watching. Keep learning. Have a great day.